Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. CPU prices in October 2023 are absolutely insane right now. Intel just launched their 14th gen CPUs. What's the price? What's the performance? We're going to go through all of it. And of course, we'll go through the best price or performance gaming CPU and production CPU this month. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like. This makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. Great news. Micro Center just opened its 26 US store with Charlotte, North Carolina coming in early 2024. Micro Center's fall savings are happening right now with great deals like this Ryzen 7700 with MSI B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of fast DDR5 for just $399. Or this AOC 165 Hz 1080p gaming monitor for just $149. Want to get into 3D printing? New in-store customers can get the Creality Ender 3 V2 for just $99 or step up to the Ender 3 S1 for just $199. Check out the great deals. Use the link in the video description. Let's jump into CPU prices and let's start off on the Intel side because Intel's got three new CPUs. That's right, three new CPUs. Let's punch through them really quick. We got the 14600K, 14700K, and the 14900K. 14600K coming at $304. 14700K, $394, and $574 for the 14900K. Right now, you can get really any of them. Remember, the way we do this, we don't care between K and KF. We typically just take the cheapest one. There's really no advantage between the integrated graphics version, which is the K, and the non-integrated graphics version, which has the F at the end. But right now, you can get these CPUs not that much more than their 13th gen counterparts. In fact, let's quickly take a look at that. The 13600K, even with some price cuts right now, $279. Now, that's a pretty good price for the 13600K, but it's not that much cheaper, quite honestly, than the 14600K. It's only about 25 bucks cheaper. 13700K at $364. Again, not that much cheaper than the i7-14700K, and the 14700K does have four more e-cores on it. We'll go over their performance and their price later in the new section of the video. And of course, at the end, we'll go through the price to performance and we'll see how these stack up against the Ryzen CPUs and the 13th gen. Going through the rest of the stack, not a lot of changes in the locked CPUs. If you look like the i3-12100, i5-12400, those have been the really, really good value CPUs out there. Not much in terms of price fluctuation, even as far back as July on that. But if you look at the 12600K, it says $192 right now. But during Prime Day, it got down $154. And this is not the first time it's been down there. Honestly, to me, this is where this CPU belongs. And especially if you're focused on Black Friday, what are the prices gonna be at Black Friday? If you're waiting for a more performative CPU out there, this is a CPU that I might keep my eye on. 1200K continues to be, be stupidly priced and almost irrelevant. I'm just about ready to take it off the list altogether. 13400 down to $199, but... That CPU really needs to get cheaper. We've seen it as low as 164 several, several months ago. Don't know what's going on there. Let's jump into Ryzen CPU pricing for October 2023, including we'll go through some of the prices we just saw on Prime Day with the eye towards Black Friday because AMD does typically make it rain. Unlike Intel and unlike NVIDIA, AMD usually slashes those prices, especially around Black Friday. Let's start off with this top of the stack. We're just going to ignore the 7950X 3D, 7950X. Really no change there. The one I really want to focus on is this 7800X 3D. That's right, the current fastest gaming CPU on the planet. We'll see whether or not the 14700K or the 14900K can beat it in just a moment. But look at that price, $369 down, continues to drop. And during Prime Day, during Prime Day, look at that. Got all the way down to $349 at Newegg, $349 at Amazon. Pretty much everybody had it. So if you're thinking about building a gaming PC right now and you're thinking about Black Friday and you're in the higher part, I'd say like $1,500-ish dollar range, this is a CPU I would definitely keep my eye on. Otherwise, the Ryzen 7600, no real change. Same with the 7700. It just continues to float around those same price points. But AMD is seriously cutting prices right now on Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. I'm filming this actually on the launch day for 14th gen Intel. I was expecting, I'll be honest, to see more Ryzen price cuts. It could be that they'll kick in uh, later in the week here as things go on. AMD is cutting prices right now, at least like on the 5700X, down $169. Now we have not seen that in quite some time, $169. 
actually start making it kind of viable in terms of a budget gaming system. It is only about 3% more performance than the 5600, which also got a price cut, and that one came down to $134, which is kind of where it's been between $120 and $150, and it's really fluctuated. But $134 is starting to float down to that Black Friday price we saw last year of about $120, including the 5600X was that price. Then in terms of the Ryzen 5500, this thing keeps selling out completely. Newegg keeps selling out completely at Amazon. A little bit of danger in terms of the ultra budget space, especially with B660 motherboard prices going way, way up during the launch of 14th gen Intel, which endangers some of those cheaper i3-12100 rigs. The 5500 had really, really been a stable place for budget gamers to go to build an amazing gaming PC, 1440p capable, Check out our recent October builds. We did a 1440p build with this for like $600. Pretty insane value. Hopefully this one stays in stock. All right, let's talk about the launch of the Intel 14th gen because, ouch, 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 ouch. I'll tell you this. When Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of Intel, did not get up at Intel Innovation Day, like I told you he was going to, but I was wrong. When he did not get up and announce Intel 14th gen, I knew we were in some some big doo-doo here. In terms of the architectural differences, I plan to put a, a slide up to show you the difference between 14th and 13th gen. There's virtually zero. They are the same CPUs, just slightly overclocked with the exception of the i7, 14700K, having four more e-cores. Big whoopity doo nobody cares about that. No improvement to the memory controller, just basically slightly better bin silicon. This is really 13th gen, they've just been these better and they're calling them 14th gen so they can, I don't know, charge you a little bit more money. In fact, let's quickly punch through the only features that I think may be interesting, and they're not really that interesting. Intel application optimization. This is something that they say in the future, they can have uh, per game, different tunings for their CPUs to up the performance. Right now it only works in two games. If this ever becomes a thing, we'll do more in depth with it. Right now though, I don't even think it's worth looking at. The other one is, Slightly more interesting, I think, which is Intel's Extreme Tune Utility, which is the program you use uh, with their unlocked CPUs to help tune them up. It now has an AI assist. So will it, an AI will now take a look at your CPU, your GPU, your power supply, all the cooling, everything else in order to determine what is the best overclocking settings for you. And right now only works with the i9-14900K and KF. Hopefully will work very, very soon with the 14700, 14600K. They do not currently have any plans to bring this to 13th gen, which boggles my mind because these are 13th gen CPUs. They're just being called 14th gen. So I don't know why they wouldn't. Hopefully they'll relent on that point because I think this is one of the big fun things to do if you're into Intel CPUs is to tune them up. Let's very quickly talk about performance here. I've got the tech spot and I've got Tom's hardware review articles. I'll leave a link down in the video description. Basically there's three slides here and that's all you need to understand. Really no difference in terms of Cinebench score. That's multi-threaded score with the exception of the 14700K which has four more e cores. So yeah, it, it, it slightly outperforms the 13700K. In terms of gaming performance, I've got the Tom's hardware suite here. This is 1080p with an RTX 4090, and there is virtually no difference between the 14600K and the 13600K, two FPS difference. There's a three FPS difference on the i7, and there's basically a five FPS difference on the 14900K, and the Ryzen X 3D CPUs just absolutely demolish them. The 7800X3D sitting at the top. Currently, right now, you can buy that, as we saw, for $369, cheaper than most of these Intel 14th gen CPUs. While well, we're talking about Intel 14th gen, I do want to note that it seems like tons and tons of Intel motherboards, Z series motherboards, both Z690 and Z790, are kind of on fire sale right now, which actually might kind of help save this launch because you might be able to pick something up on a deal. Like for instance, the ASUS ROG Strix Z690F has BIOS flashback. Most of the ASUS boards do not for the Z690s, but this has BIOS flashback. It's a board you could use. It's a great motherboard. It's got amazing RGB on it, $199 right now. And that's a DDR5 motherboard. So it is possible that we are gonna see this launch a little bit saved by crashing motherboard prices and overall kind of good value. So what are my thoughts on the 14th gen launch? Well, there's really no 14th gen, it's 13th gen slightly overclocked. That's what this is. This is 13th gen silicon. If, if they had improved the memory controller and you could plug in much faster DDR5 memory and get more performance out of that, that I think that would have made a difference. That's one thing that I was hopeful for. If the, the power efficiency on these had been better, I would have been more excited, but clearly all they've done is 
jack as much power into the binned CPUs as they can to get a couple hundred megahertz. And it doesn't really result in a lot of gaming performance, really not that much multi-threaded performance either. I will say though, if you're somebody who's looking for a hybrid system, you're a pro and you need both that super professional level of production and you also want it to perform really well in gaming, that has been Intel's saving grace throughout the 13th gen. And of course, we all know the one thing that can save a not great product is pricing, pricing. So there might be some huge price cuts come. Remember, we're not that far away from Black Friday. So this could all be turned around if the right prices come out. Let's jump into the best price performance gaming and production CPUs in October 2023 with an eye towards Black Friday. And if you're not familiar with the way we do this, we basically take all the Intel and Ryzen CPUs that we've been talking about. We get their CPU costs, we get their motherboard costs, we get a RAM cost for them and a cooler cost, and we get a price performance for the platform because we divide it by either the multi-core score for production, that's basically the Cinebench score, or the gaming score. And those gaming scores are all tied back to the i3-12100. Now you'll notice the list is a little bit shorter. We've actually trimmed this down quite a bit. I have removed a lot of the DDR4 configurations for Intel that just don't make any sense and probably will never make any sense, especially as DDR5 RAM continues to fall. We've also made some other changes. If you wanna get in there and find out what they are, you can check them out right here. We do keep a change log. I've added in 14th gen and I've reconfigured or rescaled all the scores for Ryzen 7000 and 13th and 14th gen unlock CPUs based on those new benchmarks that we just got. Let's start off with the best budget gaming CPU. So this is where the total platform price is $400 or less. And look at that, Ryzen 5500 continues to remain on top, even though the price has gone up a little bit. B450 motherboards continue to be a really, really good option at $79. Unfortunately for the i3-12100, i3-13100, those cheaper B660 boards have completely vaporized off the market. Now we did just go through Amazon Prime Day, could be they've completely sold out and they'll come back in. But right now those motherboards are up about $15 or $20 for those more budget tier parts. The Ryzen 5600, of course, huge benefit of coming back down to $130. $34 and cheap B550 motherboards. Well, at the same time, the i5-12400 continues to suffer because those B660 motherboards are in fact off the market and they have gone up. Ryzen 5700X, you know, nice at $169, but it requires a budget tower air cooler, doesn't come with one. So it is hurt by some of those other situations. I would love to see that i5-12600K get back down to $154 and let's see what that thing can do. Jumping over to mid-range production. So this is where the multi-core score is 170 or greater and the price is $700 or less. And look at that, Intel just continues to dominate this category. I mean, kind of proving if you wanna get work done with your PC and that's your primary focus, Intel's really, really good option right now. i5-13500 comes up, if, remember that's got the six performance cores and the eight E cores. It's very similar to the i7-12100K, but the 1200K unfortunately was $210 last month, has gone up to 286, so it's kind of kicked out of the top spot. Really the only competition here is possibly the 5700X, now that's down to $169. I just don't see why you wouldn't go with a 12600K, especially towards Black Friday if that that CPU continues to come down in price. The only Ryzen 7000 CPU that even makes this list is the 7700 at the very bottom. Jumping over the best mid-range gaming CPU. So this is where the gaming scores 130 or greater and the total platform price is $700 or less. And the 7600, Ryzen 7600 continues to dominate, dominate this chart despite the fact that the CPU price has gone up. Remember it was 199 over the summer, even during Amazon Prime Day, this is the best, it got down to $218. But given the cheaper B650 motherboards out there, given the DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM that we're recommending for it, and even some of the cheaper kits continues to fall in price and you can cool it pretty easily. $484 for the overall platform cost on that. 5800X3D, really, it's just an upgrade if you already own AM4. I expected the 13600K to do a little bit better here. It's not terrible at $3.63, given the CPU price has come down a little bit, and Z690, the cheaper Z690 motherboard prices have fallen away quite a bit. 14600K, kind of stuck in no man's land. Honestly, these CPUs clearly need a price cut if Intel wants to market them as mid-range gaming CPUs, not just production CPUs. Jumping over to high performance production before we get to high performance gaming, which I know everyone's always waiting for. And look at that, the 14700K. I mean, Intel seems to have done it 
They're dominating this. Look at that, a $1.80 price to performance compared to everything else on the chart, just completely stomps it in the ground. Frankly, everything else on this chart, other than the 7900X, which is stuck in no man's land, is just really kind of compressed and almost the same, basically, except for the number one out there. What changed? Well, honestly, the 14700K came in. Well, isn't that much more expensive than the 13700K? Z690, Z790 motherboard prices have been cut. You don't need that much to cool it, honestly. And yeah, you get a platform price of $758 versus the 7950X of $959. And it's it's really competitive. Now, I don't have a way, of course, of taking into account the higher power usage of some of these bigger CPUs. The power supply pricing is weird. It also depends on your GPU in there. It's just a little too complicated. So you can take that into account if you want. Jumping over to best high performance gaming CPU and oh my goodness, it's just like Ryzen 7800X3D is clobbering, absolutely clobbering everything that Intel throws at it here. And it does so at tons less power draw too. And it's got upgradability, Intel, Intel. Somebody call the doctor, man. You gotta get some fixes going. The 13700K, 14700K, just way too expensive, especially with the Ryzen 7800X3, the CPU price coming down. And that's despite the fact that some B650 quality motherboards, the price overall went up. So yeah, I don't know what to tell Intel here. You gotta make some price cuts here somewhere because you're just not competitive. Look at that poor 4900K all the way at the bottom just doesn't make a ton of sense given the performance you get. Now remember, in order to get the most out of these CPUs, you really do need a high-end gaming GPU. We go through this in our best CPU-GPU combo video. I would pair the 7800X3 or honestly any of these CPUs with at least a 7900XT, but probably a higher GPU or an RTX 4070 Ti. Let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you buy now or should you wait? Well. <laughs> Honestly, we had some great deals on Amazon Prime Day, and if you pick them up, probably gonna be as good as Black Friday, and you get it now, and you don't have to wait. But the good news is, if you missed out, Black Friday is right around the corner. We're talking six, what, six, seven weeks away. So in a lot of different categories, I think you should wait. Let's start off with the budget tier where maybe I think my advice is gonna be a little bit different. I think there is some danger at the Ryzen 5500 selling out. How much you honestly gonna save on those low end CPUs? what, 10 bucks? I would go ahead and pull the trigger on the one that you think you want. I think the 5500 right now, it probably before Black Friday, as long as those B660s are out of stock, those cheaper ones, makes a lot of sense because you can get cheaper B450 motherboards and you can pair that with a higher end GPU that you can wait till Black Friday to buy. So I would pick up that CPU now, that way it doesn't sell out on you. If you're looking more in the mid range, I would probably call a timeout. The 7600 is not going to sell out. And AMD does have a history of making it rain. That CPU did get down to $199 for Prime Day in July. I'd expect it to see it around that price. And again, I expect motherboard and other deals for those mid-range CPUs. So the B650 motherboards, maybe some more deals on Z690. Although Z690 deals right now are, are plentiful as we just saw. I do also think that Intel may decide to slash some prices and AMD and Intel might get into a little bit of a price war. That would be super nice, especially before Black Friday, because Intel does not have a history of cutting prices, but AMD does. At the ultra high end, $369, how much more are you gonna save on that 7800X 3D? Maybe you're like, wanna hold out and see if that 14700K kind of comes down in price, that's fine. 7800X 3D, $369, that's a pretty cheap, top tier, top flight gaming CPU right now. I would just maybe pick it up if you don't want it to sell out. Otherwise, go ahead and just, you know, roll the dice. You probably save, you'll probably get down to that 349 price again, maybe even a little bit cheaper on the flash sale. And we know DDR5 RAM will be on sale, motherboards will be on sale, storage will be on sale, graphics cards will probably be on sale as well. So if you wanna wait at the higher end, I don't think you're really doing yourself any disservice. Let's see if Intel wants to actually respond. Remember, links for everything are down in the video description. And if you got value out of this video, Give it a like, because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Hey, speaking of cool content, did you see our GPU market update? We go through all the GPU prices just like this and tell you what's the best price of performance GPU in October, including possible Black Friday deals. It's right here, check it out, and we'll catch you on the next one.